jump inequalities are simply wrapped in a number line. So let's look at this. If we have x is less than 5, what x is less than 5 represents? Is that all the numbers to the right or all the numbers to the left? Which one? The left. Yeah, this is a number line, right? And the numbers that are less than 5 are this way. Great. And if we have x is also greater than 3, where's 3 in relation to 5? Is it to the right or to the left? To the left. So it doesn't have to be like to scale or anything. There's 3. Where are the numbers greater than 3? So notice, notice what we're doing. We're graphing two different inequalities, right? Graphing x is less than or equal to 5, that's, that's this one. We're going to graph x is greater than or equal to 3, that's this way. What I want you to see is, do they have any crossover? Do these things cross over? Do they cross over here? Is this the crossover? Is this the crossover? Is this the crossover? Where do they cross over? Hey, that was the same idea as our Venn diagrams. You get it? The crossover is the intersection. They're the numbers that are common to both sets. How many of you understood that right there? Good, okay. So very much like a Venn diagram, instead of having just circles, this is like one big circle. And this is like one big circle. And where they cross over, that is our intersection. So where your lines cross, namely this region right here. That's your intersection. So graphically, this picture is this expression is this picture right here. It's all the numbers between three and five inclusive. Now, we do like to draw pictures like this, and you're going to be doing this, drawing these number lines and show me graphically what we're what numbers we're talking about. However, there's a better way to represent this, uh, and it's called interval notation. We can say, okay, instead of writing my number line every time, there's another way I can show this. Actually, there's two other ways. I'm going to show you both ways. Are you ready to see both ways here? Okay, the first way is by using this information, I can actually create a, a nicer compound inequality, a double inequality. Just watch carefully, see, see how I'm doing this, because you, you might need to do this in a couple problems. If I have both x less than or equal to 5 and x is greater than or equal to 3, would it bother you if I just reverse these things? Does that bother you? Okay, good. So x is less than or equal to 5. Sorry. I wrote them the same way. Let me reverse these things. So x is greater than or equal to 3 and x is less than or equal to 5. Does that make sense? Just reverse them. Now, I want you to think of something. If x is greater than 3, if x is greater than 3, is that the same thing as 3 is less than x? If x is bigger than 3, does this say the same thing as that? Okay. You just learned something there. You can flip around an inequality. It's just fine as long as you flip around the sign as well. Okay? You just write it backwards, and that's, that's legal. That's fine to do. So x is greater than or equal to 3 is the same thing as 3 is less than or equal to x. Not to have you with me. Okay. Now I want you to notice something. This is kind of cool. You can do this only with the and inequality. We're going to talk about or inequalities in a little while. Can you do this with the or inequality? Everyone shake your head. No. no. Can you do it with the and? Yes. yes. Can you do it with the or? No. No. But we can put and together. Watch. If x is, le I'm sorry, if 3 is less than x, and at the same time, x is less than 5. Look at that. 3 is less than x, but x is also less than 5. I can mash those together. Look. 3 less than x, x less than 5. This can make 3 less than x less than 5. You can do that with an and inequality. 3 is less than x x is also less than 5, I mash them together, 3 is less than x is less than 5. Let's see if these still represent the same numbers. Watch on the board here real quick, folks. Here we have the numbers like 3, 4, 5, right? Here we have the numbers 3, 4, 5. Here we have the numbers 3, 4, 5. Does that make sense? Here, look at that. 
Look at what x is between. Doesn't this show you that x is between 3 and 5? 3, 4, 5. Same idea here. This is it. I mean, this is the way that we could represent a nice looking graph like this in this inequality notation. There's one other way that we can represent this. This is even more concise. This is even better. You ready to see it? The answer is always yes. Of course I'm ready. Well, unless you're not ready, unless you have questions. And then, of course, you can ask questions. <clears throat> but I want you to, to see that this actually does represent the same numbers as this and this. Everyone raise your hand if you understand that those represent the same numbers. Yeah? You guys over here? Were you with me? Zoom, here you go. You are zoning out, weren't you? A <laughs> little bit. All right. I saw it. <clears throat> they do represent the, no the same numbers. There is one more way that we can represent this. Is called interval notation. Here's how you write interval notation. You use parentheses or these brackets to show this interval. Now the interval for which these numbers work are between 3 and 5. That's what this says. It says we're going from 3 to 5 inclusive because we have these equal signs. How we can represent that is by using either brackets or parentheses to represent this range of numbers. Here's how you know whether you're going to be using brackets or parentheses. Brackets are used whenever you have the number included. The number included would be like if you have the equals part. Like if I have this, watch on the board. Please watch. Does that include the 3? No. That's like 3.0000000 forever and then a little 1 at the end, all the way to 5. That does not include the 3. Does that include the 3? Yeah. If you include the 3, use the brackets. If you include the 5, use the bracket. If you don't include them, i.e. this, that is where you would use parentheses. Does that make sense to you? So if you have the equals part that says I'm including the numbers, I'm going to use this. So our brackets are used for the equals. Our parentheses are used for the strictly. Just less than, just greater than. So in our case, ladies and gentlemen, can you tell me what am I going to use, my brackets or my parentheses in this case? Brackets. Definitely. It has the equal sign. This is very much like the closed circle. Okay, this Remember the closed circle on your graphs that you were drawing on the piecewise functions? Some of you just skipped your piecewise functions, but I told you not to. Uh, the closed circle meant you include the number, right? Then you include it. That's when you used your equal sign, that was said closed. If you didn't have the equal sign, you used open. This is like your open. Do you see the correlation here? Open or not equal to, that's these. Close or equal to, that's these. So in our case, we're going to go from 3 to 5 and put some brackets around there. That's our interval notation in this case. Very concise way to say all the numbers between 3 and 5 inclusive. That's what that says. Okay, it's kind of a big deal. I've just talked a whole bunch about the AND and about some set notation. How people understood what we talked about so far. Let's apply this to some inequalities. Firstly, a little review. Do you remember how to solve inequalities? And the answer is, I don't know, we probably haven't seen any qualities in a while. Let's see if we know how to solve these things. x plus 3 is less than 8. x plus 3 is less than 8. If you want to solve inequalities, guess what? You can solve them almost exactly the same way as you solve equations. Provided you just kind of pretend, don't change the problem, but just kind of pretend that the inequality is an equal sign and do exactly the same stuff. You're going to solve it the same way you did equations. There's only one little hitch in the giddy up here. That's an old school term right there, isn't it? Uh, there's only one little hitch, is that if you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to do something special with that. Okay? That's right. So everything else works just fine. So can I subtract 3 like I would normally do in an equation? Yeah. Absolutely. Do I have to flip the sign around? No. No, 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 no. Don't do that. That's fine. The only time you would do that is if you multiply or divide by a negative. So we're going to subtract 3 like we would normally do with an equation. Don't change anything about this. Just write x less than 5, and you've got it down. Now, of course, this doesn't have an and associated with it yet. It just says x is less than 5. 
If you're asked to graph x is less than 5 like this, well, here's 5. Are, the num are, are these numbers the ones to the left of 5 or to the right of 5? Which one? Yeah, and you know what? This is kind of nice. If you have an inequality and your x is coming first, this kind of points the way you want to graph. Notice how the arrow is kind of pointing to the left side. Do you see that? It's kind of pointing this way. It's like, oh, there's an arrow that way. Do you see that? It's arrow pointing that way. If your x, please just listen to what I'm saying now, though. If your x comes first, and now if you flip this thing around, 5 is greater than x, is it pointing the right way? No, 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 no. It's pointing the incorrect way. Your x doesn't come first. But if you manipulate it, like I manipulated, uh, let's see. If I were to manipulate this one backwards, it would point the correct way. Your x must come first for you to graph this correctly. So if your x does come first, it kind of points the way you're talking about. x less than 5, x to the left of 5, that's what this says. And you know what? We can still put this in interval notation. But the problem is, this interval started at 3, didn't it? Started at 3, it went to 5. Where's this interval start? Oh, so there's not actually a number, right? I mean, if you think about the numbers less than 5, can you ever find the end of that? No. There's negative 10. Is that the end? No. Negative 11 smaller. Is negative 11 the end? No. Negative 12 smaller. Do you want to do that forever? Well, it's going to go on forever, right? No matter what number you give me, I can say, oh, there's one number smaller than that. Forever and ever and ever. So this thing starts at negative infinity, and it goes up to, where's it stop? That's where it stops. Why do I use parentheses? Because it doesn't have the equal. Very good. Uh, I want to make two points here. Firstly, he's correct. I'm going to use parentheses over here because do you notice there's no equal sign? If there's no equal sign, I cannot use a bracket because I'm not actually including the 5. What this says is you can go all the way up to 4.9999999 forever, but you can't ever go up to 5. I'm not sure if you understand that. Okay. Now, I have to use parentheses no matter what on the negative infinity. Why? Okay, very good. It's not equal to, that's, that's maybe one reason, but even if I had it like this, I'm not, just don't change your problem, even if I had it like that, yes, this would be a bracket. This would still be a parentheses. This is not enough. Well, yeah, there's, there's no actually end. Do you know how much negative infinity is? No. Me neither. So if you don't know it, can you ever get there? That's why you have parentheses over any infinity. Did you understand that one? Let's try one more together. I'll give you a couple to do on your own. We're also going to solve this one. Negative 2x minus 1 is less than 3. Let's do this. You tell me how to solve it. Oh, come on. These are, yeah, these are, we saw we just shouting this off. And these are like basic equations, right? Mm -hmm. Treat this like a basic equation. How do you solve it? Add one. So negative two x. Do I change that sign around the inequality? I haven't done anything to that yet that requires that. Negative two x is less than four. Am I done? No. What's the last step I need to do? Okay. Divide by what? Negative two. Wait, positive two or negative. Negative two. Wait a minute. If I divide by negative two. If you do that, which is what you're supposed to do here, right? The negative twos are gone. You're going to get x. You're going to get negative two. Here's a problem. If you divide by a negative, if you change the sign there, what's this? Is, what this is also doing is flipping.